Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday. Guess what? I voted yesterday. I sure did. I, uh, paperwork got to take care of real quick. I went to, um, went to our polling place here for early voting and took care of it. Uh, it was pretty quick, about 30 minutes, I guess. I stood in line. Not bad, not bad at all. Happy birthday from driver services. Don't forget to check your driver's license expiration date. Eh, pretty good. We got the, uh, let's see, what is this for? These are for my license plates. Passenger car light truck for my Ford truck. That's going to cost me $20 to register a new plate for my truck. This is for my trailer, 2000 tra 2012 trailer, checks. What the hell is that? Um, and this is for my other trailer. Yep, these are for my two little trailers. Uh, the one that's connected to me now and the one that uh, is for my backyard. Usually it'll tell you... Doesn't it give you the type of vehicle that it is so I know which is which without looking at the license plate? I think that's the license plate on my little trailer. And this is the license plate for my bigger trailer. Well, we're going to go take care of that right now. We're going to go get our license plates. Um, our stickers right now because I'm cool that way and I want to look into the class B commercial driver's license that I want to get um, and, and I want to get that license because I don't like having all my eggs in one basket you know what I mean um, so for instance we're going into winter so I'm not really gonna have enough work to be like hiring people through the winter so it's all up to me to do what I can do with pressure washing calls that come in and um, I'm gonna wait here and let this car go so I don't have to rush because I know they're in a rush going to work um, and lawn mowing right and so what happens if I hurt myself and you know I need to get out there and do five yards a day because right now basically we're just gonna go out and do like four or five yards a day we're gonna make a couple hundred bucks a day and that's basically it like four days a week that's about all we're gonna do uh, through the winter my business gets completely cut basically by 50% this month and next month complete 50% loss of income um, because of winter so you know everything's slowing down and this year I'm pretty much pushing everybody into uh, keeping me coming once a month so I'm gonna do it for November and see how many people get pissed off and didn't read all the letters that they've been getting from me in the um, invoices the notes that say hey I'm coming in November and I'm coming in December and January and February so that way we don't have a high cleanup fee come March and also everyone that sticks with me through winter and does that for me will not get a price increase come March everybody that doesn't allow me to run my business like that will get a price increase come March so either way you're gonna pay so you might as well pay with your yard looking great and if you say well I'll just fire your ass well go ahead and you're gonna pay more for somebody else because pretty much everybody does it that way and and so many people charge more than me because they don't have the route discipline that I have so they charge more to do the yard and a lot of people come once a week and I go once every two weeks so and I'm licensed and insured and you know all that all that starts to matter you know so whatever uh, and dependable and they know that so um, that's you know hey you gotta pay for that type of service right so um, I want to have something to kind of fall back on just in case I hurt myself I mean what happens if I break my pinky toe right and what happens if uh, if something happens and I just can't get out, I can't physically stand up with a weed eater, I just can't do those things. I want to have another job, another career, like another area to fall back on for at least the next three or four months um, until summer happens again. And then, and not summer, but you know, spring happens again. And then, at that point, I can assess my situation and I can either have a crew or two go out doing the yards and I continue to work for a company uh, or um, you know take a leave of absence or say hey you know I'm gonna 
quit this for now, and we'll, uh, you know, we'll pick this back up uh, maybe in the winter next year or something like that, get some experience. I don't know. Um, or maybe just do nothing with it, and I just stay healthy, and I make enough money, and I don't have any problems. But a Class B CDL costs $10. Why not just do it? You know what I mean? Why not just do it? Uh, and just have it as a just-in-case, because there are... Um, driving jobs all over the place around here so I had a question about bidding contracting jobs you know like um, commercial properties and stuff like that and the guy wants to know how I go about bidding these um, like commercial jobs and stuff like that I don't okay so so that pressure wash job that you see me doing the basketball court the pool the tennis court um, the pool house building for that HOA that's a guy I know sort of who was like, hey, let me know what you would want to do this. I, will, I don't think I was contested with other bids. And so I was like, shit, this is going to take me all day. I want this amount of money. And then for the tennis court and basketball court, I was like, shit, this is going to take me all day. So I want this amount of money. Um, which was not my financial goal. It was way above my normal daily financial goal. Because uh, it's a HOA, it's considered a commercial property. They got paid for that. That's why I carry insurance for just that reason, really. Um, I would, anyways, but for just that reason that you might, you know, somebody might say, "Hey, uh, if you got insurance, you know, you can do our HOA, or you can do, you know, give me a, a proposal." So I carry insurance. But um, back in Florida, before the military, going back into the. Um, late 80s, early 90s when I had trimmers down in Fort Lauderdale area. What I used to do with commercial properties is, I want you to think now, I don't have any of the material with me so I can't show you it. But do you remember back in school like you would go to Walgreens or a local drugstore? Um, we didn't have Walmart back then but like Kmart, um, some type of an office supply store and think back to your school think back when you were in school um, you would buy those book report covers that had the black plastic um, clip and you had the clear front cover and maybe a black cover in the back and you would you would slip your papers in there and then put that clip on it um, and that would hold everything, that would sandwich it together and make it so you can make kind of like a book out of it. Those, those, I used to have those types of, of cheap binder. I mean, cheap, that's cheap. Very inexpensive. And then I had a, um, a generic printout that said, you know, I'd like to introduce you to my business. My name is Dan, the owner of Trimmers Enterprises. Um, my business was established or, or the business was established back in 1983 or 86 or whenever it was I started mowing lawns uh, I'm currently licensed and insured and I would like to uh, provide provide your company with a free quote for property maintenance or something like that you know and that would be like my opening paragraph, just a nice little intro. So I would, I, so when they opened it up, they would just first read that. Oh, okay. So this is you know letterhead on the top, Trimmers Enterprises. I think I had a logo. I don't remember, man. You're going so far back. Um, things have changed so much, but I, you know, there'd be, you know, in the middle there'd be my like letterhead or whatever, and you know, my return address and phone number and all that crap. And a nice little opening paragraph, just quickly introducing my business. And then below that would be their information. And it would be like um, uh, attention manager, uh, Miami subs, or, you know, whatever I was, I was doing, whatever I was leaving it, I would make a note. I would be driving around. I'd be like, oh, that place looks like they need somebody. And I would pull in. I'd look real fast, I'd make some notes on paper, and then I would go home, and then I would type that out. I would, you know, make that happen, print that out. Shit, back then, I don't even remember if we had, what we had for computers, but I'd print that out, you know, I, I, and then I would put the amount in. So, opening paragraph, who I am, a little bit about the company, very quick, very brief. 
um, and then get right to the meat and potatoes, their business, attention manager, their business name, pro um, property maintenance would be uh, provided as follows, uh, weekly cuts, monthly pesticide application, quarterly fertilizer, um, spruce up the beds with whatever they had to replace it, mulch or rock. Um, if it was rock, it'd be annual replacement of rock, um, which would be really cheap, just touch-ups. Um, if it's mulch, it would be complete mulch jobs. You know, trimming the bushes, bottoming the trees so their customers don't don't sue for scratching their foreheads, walking in and out of the the, the place. Um, uh, parking lot sweeping, keeping the place clean, you know, all that. I'd have all that broken down a la carte. And then I would say, um, you know, the following services, uh, we could provide the following services at, at this price and interval. And then I would say, you know, lawn cutting, seven day interval. Uh, every seven days, 80 bucks a cut. Uh, trimming the hedges every 14 days, so every other cut, and that would be 50 bucks. And bottoming the trees once a month, and that would be 80 bucks. You know, and then, Everything like that, and they can they can say, yeah, okay, um, go ahead and just do the whole thing. So here's a year a year agreement, you know, um, and then boom, everything's done. It's all right there, and that's all I would do. I would not knock on doors. I would not, you know, sit there and say, hey, I'd like to talk to the manager. Uh, hey, I'm Dan. Here's my card. Would you like to go for a walk with me around your property? Nope. I would have it all done behind the scenes. And then I would put it in a, a, manila, a manila envelope and seal it and put attention manager Miami subs or um, Eckerd Pharmacy or uh, wherever I was going. I, I doctor, I lab, whatever place I was going to, Sonic. Um, and I would just give it to the counter. I would say, hey, how you doing? I'd like a Coke. And uh, can you hand this to your manager, please? Uh, thanks. And then there would be a business card paper clipped to the outside of the envelope so they know right away that this you know what this is um, and then you know they would have my business card and they can open it up at their convenience they can read it and then they can call me and say hey um, I'm interested or they can file it and then I'd hear from them later but I never wasted any time with anybody I would go there I would look I would price it I'd come back later would it printed up nice cheap hand it to counter help and wait for the calls to come in. And I did quite well. Um, it, it worked. And I didn't waste time like going around all day with people and doing quotes and, and losing time and, and glad handing with people. Nope. I would just drive around. I'd be taking my kids to school, whatever. And I would see a place. I'd drop my kid off, go back to that place and go, huh, that looks like they need help. Get it on, type it up real fast. Everything's already done, so I would just change names and prices. That's all I had to do is change names and prices. And I would change the, the store name and change the price to what I thought was right. Print it, put it in the binder, put it in the envelope, handwrite it, paper clip a business card, go back to the establishment, hand it to a worker. Here you go. Could you give this to your manager, please? Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye bye. And leave. And that's how I used to bid commercial properties. And I think the managers really enjoyed, you know, the fact that nobody was bothering them because I bet they get bombarded all the time. Um, and I did that here too when I was um, starting trimmers back up. I used to do the Applebee's here on 204, um, and then things just got screwy with them with road construction. And finally, I was just like, nah, I can't mess with you guys anymore. But yeah, I was doing the Applebee's there, and I just left them a bid, and it was a really good job. Um, it was a really good bid. Um, priced pretty high, you know. I liked it. Definitely was a, a nice, a nice job. Uh, but then, like eighty percent of the property went to shit because of road expansion. So um, then they wanted me to do things, and I was just like, eh, you know what? Let's just cut ties. And uh, so we cut ties. So that's that's how I do. Uh, that's how I I would bid. Like this place right here, this worship center, the gathering worship center. Looks like they need some love. So I would just say right there, boom, the Gathering Worship Center. I would look at it, 70 bucks a cut, go home, 
make some shit up, come back when I see that people are there, and drop it off and leave. And if they call me, they call me. And if they don't, they don't. I didn't lose any time. I didn't really lose any sleep. And I didn't lose any money. And if I got it, I got it. And if I didn't, then what are you going to do? That's it. Cool. Okay, I'm here at the DMV. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get my license plate squared away. I'll let you know how that works out. All right. Um, I got my tags. And freaking 60 something dollars for the three tags that's nuts uh, see they passed this law in Florida uh, I think in 2013 maybe if you buy a brand new car you pay sales tax you're good your license plate costs you 20 bucks for the rest of your life if you buy a used car you're not good you have to when you when you redo your tag you're going to pay um, when you go to get your tag, you know, for a, a new used car that you buy off of your neighbor, let's say, you're going to pay, I think in Georgia, it's 6.5% of the value of the vehicle that that Atlanta says your vehicle's valued at. So that's a one-time fee. So you're going to pay tax on buying your neighbor's used car. That kind of sucks. But then you're only going to pay $20 for your plate from there on in. Um, if you buy a used car from a dealer, you're going to pay sales tax and then you pay $20 for your plate there on in. So either way, you're paying tax on your used vehicles now where it used to not be like that. You used to just, um, you buy a used vehicle, you, in Georgia, you would pay a value tax basically on your license plate and as your vehicle went down in value your license plate cost less and less every year people with Mercedes were paying hundreds of dollars a year for a license plate people with piece of shit gremlins you know are paying thirty dollars for a license plate so it was all relative they said screw that now if you sell that gremlin and, and Atlanta says that gremlins worth 2500 bucks then the person that wants to go get a license plate for it is now going to pay six and a half percent of that 2500 bucks and then the next year you'll pay twenty dollars same with the Mercedes you buy a Mercedes and you pay your sales tax at the dealership the next year you're not paying hundreds of dollars for a plate you're only gonna pay twenty dollars for a plate so that's how they started doing that um, for some reason my truck was twenty my small trailer uh, that I would use for like pressure washing and stuff like that was twenty no it was twelve and this trailer, they charged me $12 plus $19 for value tax of sorts. And I'm like, wait, that doesn't make any sense. And me and the lady went round and round and round, and she couldn't really explain to me why this second year, this isn't the first time I'm titling it, or no, we don't title trailers in Georgia, but this isn't the first time I'm getting a plate for it. So why am I having to pay so much for... Um, the license plate she really couldn't tell me and she started getting really snippy with me and I'm like you know this trailer is not even two thousand dollars I don't understand why I have to pay so much tax and they they actually on the registration they actually have this trailer valued at five hundred ninety nine dollars so I don't know didn't make sense doesn't make sense I feel like I got screwed but what are you gonna do you know what, what are you gonna do but whatever so my two trailers and my truck are uh, plated now for a year and my car if you guys are wondering because I know you guys are <laughs> because you're you guys are freaking on it um, if you guys are wondering my car is with my ex-wife first and then me as a co-signer and even though I got it in the divorce um, it's still primary registration is still under her name and me so it's her birthday so I don't do the car until um, it's her birthday time frame so I didn't have to do the car but the car would only be 20 bucks so I would have registered two trailers and two vehicles and it would cost me eighty four dollars total for everything not bad as far as getting my class B CDL I ran in there you take um, a 50 question test you can miss 10 and then you take your air brakes test 25 questions you can miss five I think they said yeah five it'll cost me ten dollars 
when you take the exam, if you pass, you'll get a temporary CDL permit. You can use that permit to drive, to train um, with a licensed CDL person and you have six months to go and do the driving test. Now, I can do the driving test by borrowing a vehicle. Um, I can do the driving test by probably renting a vehicle. I can go to the technical college and pay uh, a little bit of money and they'll do the test for you. Like you go there and they have the truck and they have the instructor that are certified and they'll you do the pre-trip inspection and you do the driving test and everything with them right there um, and they certify you and you take that print out to the DMV and then you get your permanent class B CDL so that's what it looks like so 10 bucks so I can't complain with that so uh, we'll probably set something up for the next sometime maybe this week maybe next week to do it um, right now with early voting going on and the beginning of the month everybody and their brother is at the DMV and is at the um, the uh, tag office so we're just gonna wait on that a little bit and let things settle down I, I don't have all day to stand there and wait uh, you can make appointments too so we'll just have to see uh, but now let's go to work so the first thing we want to do we're gonna mow some grass right up here we're gonna do the senior citizen couple I told you guys in the past videos though that the, the gentleman did pass away recently um, but we're gonna go up here do the senior citizen couple um, and then we're gonna go into Georgetown and we got one two three to do in Georgetown so we'll make a couple hundred bucks today um, and call it quits it's almost 10 o'clock right now so not a big deal we're gonna do we're gonna do three we're gonna do four yards and uh, get things squared away holy crap guys you're not gonna believe this but I left my camera on and now the battery's just about all the way dead but we finished my senior citizen couple and look behind me look in the bed of my truck you see that hot mess of crap back there you know what that is that's a stealth recumbent bicycle with the met the net seat I'll show you later what that's all about but she asked me she said hey Dan um, can you go into my shed grab a ladder climb this pole and chop these roots just chop the roots and leave everything so the top will die and fall and the bottom roots will regenerate sure no problem let me do that for you I open up the shed and there's one of those badass, super expensive, 26 inch back wheel, really small front wheel, sit down on the mesh seat, lay back, recumbent bikes, which I love because I can ride those and not hurt my hamstring. And uh, I was like, hey, what are you gonna do with this bike? You know, I would, um, I love recumbents, let's work out a deal. And she's like, well, you served in the military, didn't you? And I was like, well, yeah. And she's like, well, I wanted to give it to a, a vet. so." How about I give it to you? Now, before all this, she was talking about mailing me a Christmas check this month. Um, and, you know, and I was like, oh, you don't have to do that. And she's like, no, no, no. You know, every year I send you a Christmas check. So I was like, well, you're going to give me this bike? Then don't give me a Christmas check. I was like, let, let me, we'll swap it out. And then on the side of the bike is her husband's name on a placard for charity bike rides. Now, I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I used to do charity bike rides. I used to do a lot of them. And I'd like to get back into them, but I couldn't do it with the, my standard road bike because it hurt my hamstring too much. But I can do it with recumbents. So, because I had a recumbent, but I sold my recumbent a long ass time ago because it was a cheaper model recumbent. It was like a $600 recumbent, it was cheap. Um, so I sold it. Um, and now I got this one. This is, this is really a super cool, bad to the bone recumbent. So she gave me this recumbent and everything's good on it it might could use some new tires it looks like they might be a little bit dry rotted uh, the back tire you inflate to 100 the back the, the front tire you inflate to 80 so I inflated the front tire to 80 and I inflated the back tire to 80 um, it said 100 inflate to 100 um, so I did it you know you know what I mean um, but I already rode it once and it's really really nice and he's got the brag run the, the, the brag ride which is a, a, a ride in Fort Bragg, North Carolina, I believe, a charity ride. And so they used to do that ride. He did that ride. And so it's got his name and it's got his, his number and he's got all the plates lined up in front of each other and zip tied on. So I said, Marianne, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna keep those plates on this bike and, and I'm gonna start doing the charity bike rides again and I'm gonna do them in your husband's name. So every time I enter, I'm gonna enter as your husband and 
we will pass along the uh, memory of Sam, who just recently died. Um, we'll 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 send Sam. I'll do the work, and he can and he'll get the glory. Um, his name will get the glory for being the entrance of um, charity rides. So we're gonna do a charity ride next Saturday. Not this Saturday, because this Saturday is my charity run. So the next Saturday will be my charity ride. Uh, we're gonna go to Claxton, um, Georgia, and it's the, um, Claxton is the is home of the uh, fruitcake. And I did this ride like two or three years ago with my buddy Peter, who has cerebral palsy, and he does long distance cycling. And so me and him went to Claxton and we did this ride together. And at the end, I did the longer version and he did the shorter version. At the end of the ride, the last rest stop that you get to is uh, fruitcake. And so all the grandmoms are there and they serve you up their homemade fruitcake. And you're supposed to let them know which one you like best. And I believe they're all the best. So I said, I want a sliver from each. And then they put homemade whipped cream on it. And oh my goodness, you want to talk about delish. Absolutely delish. Um, so yeah, so that's going to be in Claxton, Georgia, which is west of us. So here's the deal. On the, is it the 12th maybe? The 12th of November, that Saturday, if anybody wants to meet me, if you're in Georgia, South Carolina, and North Florida, there is an event, a charity bike ride. I will be there with a fresh mohawk and a, and a very bright green um, uh, spe special specialist. Is that, is that what it's called? The, the, that brand specialist? The expensive brand? I have a specialist helmet, bright green. And uh, I'll be in black cargo style bike shorts. Um, but I don't even know if I have to be in those because of the mesh seat. I don't think I have to be in those in that padded type seat. So uh, if anybody would like to meet me, ride with me. Um, you don't. You can ride with me. You don't have to enter. You don't have to pay to show up with your bicycle. And there's all types of stops and rest stops and stuff like that. And you can just fall in, just join in with us and, and have a ride. I don't. I don't think anybody would care if you just joined in. I really don't know. I would prefer that you you gave to the charity, like you enter when you're there, you sign in, sign up. Um, that would be great. Uh, but I think that would be a lot of a lot of fun. I'll look it up online, but it's going to be the Claxton Charity Bike Ride. What exactly is called? I don't know, but Claxton, Georgia, C-L-A-X-T-O-N, Claxton, Georgia. Uh, it's a charity bike ride. And um, gosh, I wish I could give you guys more information, but I'll, I'll try to get you more information by the end of the day. Also, um, she gave me the computer, so it, it has the little bike computer with it. Uh, that's on it and she gave me this big old giant flag with the American flag on it because um, when you're on a recumbent you're not sitting up high and people might not see you so um, I'll have the flag there so we're gonna uh, we're gonna do it they're gonna have different levels of um, entrance and then what they do is they paint the, the, the arrows on the ground so they'll have probably like a 12 mile 25 mile uh, 60 mile uh, you know they have rides like that so you you pay you enter you tell them what you want to do and then they'll tell you what color you are when you get there and then you follow those colors on the ground and some colors will be pointing straight some colors will be saying to turn here depending on your route and they also usually will give you a printout of the route um, but I remember it was gorgeous man it was absolutely gorgeous and I'm so excited I'm super excited uh, and she was so happy to give me the bike I was like wow I said, Miss Shear, imagine how happy you'll be if you give me your home. And then, and then it was awkward silence. But seriously, I mean, it was hilarious that you know we laughed. But it, it's hilarious that, not hilarious. It's awesome that this worked out the way it did. Uh, she really is truly so happy, and I'm going to keep her husband's memory alive in charity rides, and that's touching. I almost, I almost cried talking to her about it. It, it touched me. It made me uh, very, what's the word I'm looking for? Emotional, but I was able to hold it in because she was holding it in. And so I didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't want two basket cases in the front, in her front yard, me and her. So uh, I think that's amazing. See, you never know what you get with this channel. 
You know, you guys think I'm such a hard ass, I'm such a dumb ass, or I'm such a badass, but really, I'm a softie. I really am. I got the biggest heart in the world, and I just love to make people happy. It made me so happy that, you know, I was going to be willing to cut her yard for a while, you know. Figure out what you want for the bike, two, three hundred bucks, and I'll cut your yard for a while for free. And here she is like, no, 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 I want to give it to a, a veteran, and why not give it to you? And I was like, well, if you're going to give it to me, then let me keep Sam's name alive, and blah, 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 and there we go. So that's what we did. And I also grabbed some firewood, too, because uh, there's some big logs that were cut up that the, the county still hasn't gotten yet from the hurricane. So I grabbed some logs. So we're going to go by my house and drop this crap off, um, the logs, drop this bike off, and um, I'll show you guys the bike real fast. Super cool, man. I'm really, really excited. And, and, and here's the best part. I already have an electric motor for bikes for a back wheel already built up. So I can very quickly make this an electric recumbent so you have the battery assist. Um, so if, and the way that works is if, you're, if you pedal it like normal and you can coast like normal and you would never even know except for the, sen the seven pounds added to the back wheel of the hub, that's a motor, you will have that. Um, but you never know it's there, honestly. And then when you want a little assistance to like get up hills or something like that, you just squeeze that thumb throttle um, it comes you can use a thumb throttle or a twist throttle because this one has twist shifts and I would put the thumb throttle on it and you give a little bit of power and help you go up those hills and that keeps injured legs from getting further injured and that keeps you in the fight makes it so you can play along and have a good time um, and then you have different batteries different size batteries uh, you can get three because my systems are, are 36 volt system so you need three 12 volt batteries you can get them any size you want uh, but if you get the 9 amp hour 12 volt battery you're going to have a 27 pound no yeah I think it's I think it's a 27 pound bat no no not 27 shoot I don't remember what it is 9 pounds I think it's 9 or 10 pounds you're adding to the back bicycle rack right behind you so you put the battery pack back there but that's going to help you get 20 miles at about 20 miles per hour with the 9 amp hour battery pack. So, yeah, in all seriousness, it's, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Uh, but that's a totally different video. I used to do electric bikes and I got, I got uh, about a dozen electric bike kits in my shed ready to be built up. Well, I have a 26 inch already built up, uh, ready to rock. So. I can put that on, and I just have to go buy batteries. Um, it's a seal. It's a sealed lead acid batteries. It's the same batteries that you would get in a um, like the power toys that kids have, the powered motorcycles, electric little dirt bikes, and stuff like that. They run around neighborhoods. Same type of batteries, um, but you don't get them from Walmart. You get them from like Batteries Plus or a good battery store. So that's the deal, yo. All right, the uh, Sony Action Cam. Damn it! I left it on again, so the battery's dead. Uh, so I got you on my point and shoot, my Sony. This yard was pretty much covered in the, the small oak type leaves and some of these leaves. So blow it all out, blow it all out, blow it all out. Edge, weed eat, raked. Didn't even mow the front. Mowed the side on the other side of the driveway. Just went up. Blew all this out. So I just blew this out. Blew it away from the fence. Weed eated. And then I mowed and I just shot it in there. Now that pile of leaves is just years and years and years of buildup. Uh, but yeah, so we just blow everything out. So this is one of those $50 every two weeks. That's what I get for this yard. They quit me about two months ago for a cheaper guy. This, these people just moved in. I did the yard once, charged them their 50 bucks, which is what the other guy was paying. They fired me. Found somebody to do it for 35 bucks. I said, okay. Because they offered me the opportunity to match it. And I said, no, no way. Not in a million years. Not with all them leaves. Won't do it. Can't do it. Not gonna happen. Um, not that I was trying to be a jerk, but I mean, I just, I just can't. Hang on, Rush is talking. I just can't. I mean, it, it would, I can't do $35 for an hour um, for no reason here. Um, you know, no other yards here. Can't do it. So I um, 
I said, uh, good luck. And uh, two cuts later, he called me back. I see what you mean. I'm happy to pay you your $50. That guy didn't even rake up leaves. I'm like, thank you. That's, that's what I'm talking about. So today, um, he got serviced November 1st. He'll get serviced December 1st. And um, unless he calls and requests something in the meantime for Thanksgiving. Um, today, I just spent about an hour for 50 bucks. And I barely used any equipment. I edged and weed eated, just trimmed around real quick and light, blew all the leaves away, and directed the leaves in the backyard to the back area with the big mower, raked up the front, threw the leaves in the back. Took me about an hour, really no expenses. Um, and so that's a little bit of money. I want you to compare that to last year. Last year, November, I wasn't coming unless they called. And if they didn't call, then I wasn't, you know, then I wasn't coming until March. And so come March, that yard, oh my God. And then when you tell the customer you want 150 or 200 bucks, they're not gonna do it. They'll say, no, I'll do it myself. And they'll hire a neighborhood kid for 40 bucks to come with bags, you know, they'll provide the bags and the neighborhood kids will rake them up. So this way here, I make 50 bucks. And you know, you do that times your 95 or 100 accounts. You do one service in November, one service in December. They're not getting screwed and you're not getting screwed. You know, their yard looks nice. That, those people's yards look really, really nice now. Um, so that's my plan for this winter. That's how I'm working my winter my winter months. Uh, so, I don't know, I'm not trying to beat up a dead horse, just trying to explain it in every which possible way because everybody interprets things I say differently. So I wanna make sure, you know, you guys kinda understand, so. Um, and then any customer that allows me to do it this way is not going to get a raise in price next year. Any customer that does not allow me to do it this way will get a raise in price and will be paying a cleanup fee. And their cleanup fee will be the cost of um, four cuts. December, uh, November, December, January, and February. So if I, if I don't show up for four cuts, they're going to pay me four cuts plus that cut. So a $30 yard is going to pay 150 bucks when I come back in March. They might as well just let me clean them up. I'm not trying to be a jerk. It's just smart. It's smart for them. It's smart for me. So that's all. All right. Uh, let me go again. All right. I got dirty face. I hate this time of year for like the dirt, the sand, the dryness. Blech. Anyways, this one right there. Another one bites the dust. So we got one more in this area. And um, this one wasn't too, too bad, but it's gonna be a mess come December. It's gonna be a mess. We're a little bit early right now on all the leaves falling. Um, so basically like this cut right now is almost just make up for a lost cut for the hurricane that whole week I didn't cut. So, I mean, we could almost just not even cut this week and go to like next week get a little bit more leaves and debris but I had I lost two weeks this year um, so I lost a complete cycle of lawns this uh, this summer due to weather uh, so it's kind of nice to make it up a little bit I still justify it it's still got some warm weathers out there um, it's still pretty warm uh, in fact it was kind of balmy this morning uh, so we got one more to do in this area this one's gonna be a bit of a bear I'll try to show you a before, then I'll show you an after, but my other camera, my, that one is completely dead, so whatever. I don't know. I'm not in a rush. I'm chill. It's 2.30. We got one more to do. We'll be done around 3.30, a couple hundred bucks. Did our, uh, did our tags and got some information, went back to the house, dropped off some firewood. Yeah, I got firewood from, uh, from, uh, there's some more. It's all over the place. I mean, you just grab some logs, take them home, and, and chop them up. And I don't care if it's pine, maple. I don't care what it is. Um, as long as it burns, makes a fire, I don't give a crap. So whatever I could find, some logs, I'm just snatching up some logs and cutting them up, making some fireworks. Um, mm -hmm. And then I think tonight I'm going to show you guys how to make a delicious ramen soup recipe. Um, I got an awesome ramen soup recipe. It's really good, and I mean, it probably doesn't even, it's a its a full meal, and I don't think it would cost you a dollar. I really don't, I don't think it's a dollar. You could eat this meal probably 
every day of the week. Get some carbs, get some protein, get some sodium, get, you know, a minimum of what you need for about a buck a meal. Yeah, no kidding, about $5. You can, you can get quite a bit of food, so. Um, I mean, if you're broke, you're broke, right? What are you gonna do, guys? So let me, uh, let me pull up to this house here and then I'll uh, be right back. Okay, as suspected, this yard is a disaster. This doesn't look too bad, but when you start coming over here, look at this. That's a mess. So you got all these leaves out here. So this is gonna be a major cleanup job. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my big machine and I'm gonna mow and mow and mow and get it all toward the middle there. Get everything moved up toward the middle, then probably I'll break out my Troy Built and bag it up. I do not wanna use this camera, so you'll just have to take my word for it. Here is the mess. I will show you guys the finished product in about an hour. Took me a little over an hour. Got more leaves falling as I'm leaving, but at least you can see the grass again. Street. But everything's just blowing down. So, screw it. I mean, I blew it all in. I mulched it all up. And I had a little bit of stuff to rake up. And I just threw it in the backwoods. So I'm not taking any debris with me. So we did four yards today. All cleanups. Um... This one I didn't even edge or weedy. I just mowed the leaves. I mean, it doesn't need anything else, so I'm not wasting my time. And uh, make my income, you know, make my day's pay, and go on about myself in winter. Don't really feel tired, might even go for a run. I will, uh, I'll probably close this vlog out right now, because I got a lot of irons in the fire on text message with uh, some people. So let me, let me take care of some personal information personal stuff here and I will uh I might be back I might not if not I'll see you tomorrow but hey we did some pretty good stuff today hopefully that gives you guys some ideas on what to do with your winner guys your winner customers I'll see you guys later